Hey everyone, I'm Nicole Herrick and today I'm going to show you how to paint kitchen cabinets. Now you can do this to timber cabinets, you can do this to laminate cabinets, you just need to purchase an additional primer if you want to do the laminate <laughs> cabinets. Uh, but do you know what, I did a lot of research for this project and I, I watched many many YouTube videos and I read the back of the can, I think, but uh, there were some things they didn't tell me. So I've made some really big mistakes so that you don't have to. <laughs> and also if, if you've already done this and you're wondering how to fix your mistake, guaranteed I made it and I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well. <laughs> Let's get going. So here is my beautiful early 90s kitchen. This is timber, but it's actually done with a veneer fronted timber. You can also do this to laminate kitchen cupboards and you just need to use an extra primer at the start. All right, so we need to label all of the doors. If you don't do this, it's really gonna take you quite a few hours to figure out what goes where later on because they're all slightly different shapes and sizes and just, yeah, it, it's, it's not fun. So write it on painter's tape so that it will easily come off any painted surfaces. Also, don't forget to do your drawers. They're really funny if you get them wrong. So next, just take off all of your handles, hardware. And if you have magnetized catches, just take off the piece of metal for those as well. You can use a screwdriver or you can use a uh, drill or driver to take these off, it's no problem. Next, we're gonna take everything off the hinges. You wanna leave the hinge on the cabinet. You're only taking off the cupboard door. You don't want any of the hinge taken with you and you don't need to take the hinge off the cabinet at all. It just stays there, okay? So I found an impact driver was definitely the way to go with this. It was just so time saving and um, make sure you have a few little um, different size Phillips head screwdrivers for your driver or drill so that you can get those smaller screws as well without having to grab a screwdriver. All right, step one is to scrub dub dub absolutely every piece back front sides with sugar soap. So you need to use gloves while you're doing this because it is very abrasive to your hands. So please use gloves. And it's also a little bit abrasive to the surface that you're scrubbing, which is why we use sugar soap instead of something else. And I'll just show you here that you can see this is one that I haven't cleaned in front. It's still shiny. Whereas the other ones that are drying after I've scrubbed them, they've lost that sheen on top. So that's why we use sugar soap. Now, if you're putting handles on that are different and they're gonna have different holes, take the time right now to fill up any of your holes with wood putty. Once that is dry, you want to give everything a light sand. Now, you don't want to sand too much. You don't want to take off any kind of layers. All you want to do is rough up the surface so that your primer can stick. And this is the primer I suggest you use. This is BIN by Zinda and it is a shellac based primer. Now the reason you wanna use a shellac based primer is to stop any yellowing from coming through. So that's if you sanded too deep. Other stain blocking primers might say they stop everything, but they don't, trust me. That's how I got that shot to show you how yellowing happens. Okay, so let's talk about application and we're going to talk about detail brush and roller application. So you wanna spend a little bit of money on a detail brush. So I've got one that's quite thin here. It's probably about three quarters of an inch um, wide and it's a really high quality brush. Spend a bit of money on your detail brushes. Um, you only need one or two and they should be a really soft fiber brush with dense fibers. Do not use some $2 plasticky one. It's just gonna leave huge big streaks. A good detail brush like this is only between five and $10. So spend the extra money. It's also important to take your time when you're doing these detail areas and follow along the lines. Always do your details first and then go straight in with your roller so that you're rolling out any of those brush strokes that have come over the edge. And the roller that I'm using is a four millimeter nap microfiber roller. 
Now a little cost saving tip is to do two coats of your primer because it is cheaper than your top coat. So you'll save a bit of money. So for the top coat, I used the Dulux Renovation Range for cabinet doors and I used a satin finish in Vivid White. This is how you shake a can without getting air bubbles and also make sure that you give it a stir with a paint paddle. Now let's talk about how to apply paint correctly with a roller. So you wanna load up your roller fairly well with paint. You're gonna need quite a few coats of uh, this paint. So get it slapped on there. It, it tends to thin out. You don't get too much paint, no matter how much paint you've got on your roller. So basically spread it out as best you can. And then we wanna do what's called laying off. So laying off is when you've got most of the paint off your brush and you come back in and you do a single roll over the whole surface. So you can go in either direction when you're just spreading out the paint. But when you're laying off, you want to do a smooth, even stroke all the way in one direction. And that's generally the way the grain of the paint is going, but you do it across the entire piece. So you can see here, this is my laying off. And all. I'm doing a little bit of spreading here. And then this is the layoff. There we go. Okay, and um, when I'm sort of doing the edges, I tend to grab a whole heap more on my roller and then I dob the paint around just to spread it a bit more that way so I don't get a huge amount while I'm doing one little um, sort of section. And then spread it out and then I can do my layoff. Now the reason we do layoff is to reduce texture. Uh, this paint is self-leveling, so when you first have painted it, it will look like orange peel, but once it sort of sits and starts drying, it will smooth out a bit and it will be beautiful. It's not going to be quite as beautiful as spraying it on though, so let's talk about spraying. So this is the Zito Power Corded Spray Gun. This is $42 in Australia, guys. Ridiculously cheap. I've had mine for about five years and it is great. I am thinking about upgrading to the battery operated one though because it comes with three different nozzles for different paint viscosities, which I think would have been handy. Now, all the, well, both those paint spray guns come with a viscosity cup. Now essentially what you want to happen is for this to flow through the cup within 30 seconds. This took well over a minute undiluted. So what you need to do is dilute your paint. Now you can dilute your paint directly with water or you can use a combination of water and Floetrol, which is an acrylic paint conditioner. So you do need to use a combination though, just read the directions on the Floetrol. Now you have an adjustment dial on your spray gun. So just adjust the dial until you get a nice even spray pattern. I'm using an old box that a larger plants came in uh, for my spray tent, so to speak. Um, you can also buy cheap spray tents online. This is a $3 Lazy Susan from Kmart. You also have to wear a respirator and safety glasses and probably something over your hair. It is really important, that respirator though, guys. All right, you want to do gentle light passes. And with this first coat, you're only wanting to do a light coat. Do not put a huge amount of paint on the edges, otherwise you will get drips. Now, you wanna make sure that it's all connecting. It will also look like a bit of an orange peel at the start, but um, once it is starting to dry, it's gonna come really lovely and smooth. Now, when you're spray, spray painting, you're only gonna need two coats of this paint, so that is awesome. Now with this, I found that you need to dry these for at least the first eight hours laying flat. If you try and stand them on their ends, the paint will drip. And you also need to know that you cannot leave these outside to dry because bugs are super attracted to this paint. I realized that within 10 minutes there was bugs all over my painted finish and I tried to flick them out with my fingernail. It was very unsuccessful and I had to sand back and start again. But if you do get a bug or two, just use a toothpick to pick them out. If it does leave a tiny little mark or if you get a spot of dust in there, you wanna use some 600 grit wet sandpaper. So spray down the area that you want to sand and you're just wanting to sand the top of the little spot 
that you're wanting to clear. Now it just needs a really light little scrub because um, if you go down onto the actual surface, you'll be able to see it. But even if you do, if this is not your top, top coat, final coat, then it doesn't matter. Just give it a really gentle buff and it will, any little dust spots or any little bugs will come straight off. Now let's talk about the next massive mistake that I made and that's not scrubbing the cabinets twice with sugar soap. So these are the cabinets that were above my cooktop and that's where all of the grease lives. I only scrubbed them once accidentally and I can't believe that I had to sand this whole area back and redo everything. Now, if you have a rotary tool or like a Dremel, you can use the little wire or brush attachment to get into these areas and scrub it off really quick. If you don't have one of those, then just grab some high grit, maybe 80 grit sandpaper. Just get in there. You're only needing to do these bits um, that have peeled. Um, for any of the flatter surfaces, just go in and give them a sand. You don't need to sand everything off completely. Um, just do a nice smoothing coat, get off anything that's peeling or bubbling and check if there is any tackiness left and if there is, give it another scrub with sugar soap and then you will need to do two coats of primer. Again, do not skip this, otherwise you will get yellowing. And then you can go and continue on with your second top coat. Now, when you are bringing these inside to dry for your eight hours in their flat position so they don't drip, you also need to make sure that the temperature is above 10 degrees Celsius. And this ensures that the paint is going to cure properly or harden. If it's below 10 degrees, it's really going to stay soft and it's not going to be great. After the eight hours, you can stand them up on their side so they're not taking up so much space. And you wanna give them a full 24 hours between your next coat if you're spraying. If you're just rollering, you only need to wait eight hours in between coats. And in between all those many, many coats, you can also do your stationary cabinets in your kitchen, just remembering to scrub, sand, prime before you top coat. And look guys, I've gotta be honest, this process is incredibly time consuming, especially when you're doing it on your own. Uh, so look, pop on some headphones, listen to a podcast or some awesome music because you're really gonna have a few late nights where you're doing, um, especially some of these base cabinets where you don't want your um, people, other people living there to be able to touch stuff. You just got to have fun with it, guys. Take your time. Take it slow. Do not worry about the crazy mess. Just have some fun. your doors completely drying for at least three days before you put them back on. This is because they're still curing and they're soft. When you're putting them back on you might need to do some minor adjustments on your hinges. If you have these type hinges you have two screws in here that you can adjust to go outwards, inwards, left to right, up and down, that kind of thing. So just take your time and make sure everything is nice and level and even. If you're putting on handles before drilling any holes, just check exactly where you want them to go. You'll need to make a template. Look, I tried to do one with cardboard. It was terrible, okay? It did not work. So you need to use something that wraps over the edge of the door. So I used my handy dandy speed square. Now you could also make this with some bits of timber, but the main thing is it needs to be very square and it needs to fold over that edge of each door. Now you're gonna put your marks on both the front side and the back side of your template that you've made. Um, and this is just so that when you're doing a left door and a right door, you can flip it over and they'll be in the same position. Use a sharp implement like a smaller drill bit or a nail to punch some little tiny pre-holes and then drill your holes to the right size for your screws. Now, if you're ever so slightly off with your holes, just uh, pop your drill bit in again and angle it either up or down to create a little bit more space. And your handles will cover it anyway. 
Now let's check out the difference between the sprayed finish, which you can see here, it is super smooth, looks like a factory finish apart from a few little imperfections. And here is what the rollered finish looks like. So from afar, it looks absolutely fine, like super nice, can't complain. But when you look close up, you can actually see a few little brush marks and a few little uh, just texture. So look, it's really not that bad, but I'm definitely glad I took the time to spray the front of the doors. Hey, did you know that I do lots of other DIY videos? I bet you're not subscribed to me. Yeah. Okay. So look, all you have to do is click the little icon with my face on it. It's down over there in that corner. You don't even have to leave the video. Just click it, click subscribe. You're done. So there we go, guys. That is how to paint kitchen cabinets, making every mistake in the book so that you can avoid them and also how to fix them. I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed this or if, any little, if you received any kind of knowledge in this, I would love a big thumbs up. And also what I really want to know is what color would you love to paint your cabinets? Are you going to go for white like I did? Or are you going to go for something trendy like a soft green or a gray, maybe with some gold accents? Are you going to do navy blue lowers with some white uppers? Let me know. I love designs, so I'm always excited to see what everyone else is doing. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, next video coming is the tiling video. If it's not up right now, then it will be in just a few days. Thanks, guys.